everyone, and welcome to the Varsity Tutor Star Course Series, where today we have the pleasure of being joined by Catskill Animal Sanctuary in New York, where we're going to get to learn all about animal sanctuaries and how people who love and care about animals work to give them a safe and comfortable place to live. While we do so, we're going to get an inside tour into some of the ways sanctuaries care for the animals under their care, and we'll even get to meet and see some of the adorable personalities of the re residents at Catskill, and you may be already. Uh, today, your tour programs manager, Caden McGuire, is going to show us how they and all the other members and volunteers at Catskill Animal Sanctuary have dedicated their lives toward making the lives of the furry and feathered farm animals under their care a better place, and we might get a cameo or two from Lauren who's with us behind the scenes as well. Now, before I hand it off to Caden to get started, I want to make sure that we are prepared to collaborate, learn, and share as much as possible today. So as we move through the lesson, Caden's going to have some questions for you, and chances are you'll have questions for them too. So feel free to use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen to ask any questions that you have and to answer questions along the way. And if you don't, we don't get to your questions immediately, we'll have some time toward the end of the lesson specifically set aside for questions and answers. Now, you'll also want to be sure that you have your cameras close by because toward the end of the lesson, we're also going to have the opportunity to lean into the screen and pose for a selfie with Caden and one of the residents we'll be meeting today, perhaps a couple. And if you tag Varsity Tutors and Catskill Animal Sanctuary on Instagram, you'll have the opportunity to meet even more animal friends as you'll be entered to win a virtual cameo with Catskill Animal Sanctuary's Animals on Call program, as well as a Varsity Tutors Wildlife Creature Camp enrollment. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about that prize and the details toward the end of the class, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and let Tour Programs Manager of Catskill Animal Sanctuary, Caden McGuire, take over. Caden, take it away. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be with you this afternoon, hanging out here with one of my good friends, Jasmine the Pig. Um, and Jasmine... <laughs> Uh, Jasmine is one of the many rescued animals who calls Catskill Animal Sanctuary home. She is enjoying right now a belly rub, um, just having a great time uh, chilling out, hanging out with us because she absolutely loves people. Um, she had a little bit of a busy morning here. Um, she was enjoying the cooler weather that we've been getting around and the nice wet weather, which means perfect mud bath time for a pig. And she tuckered herself out um, and is enjoying uh, quite the pig sort of nap and rest and relaxation time right now. So she's going to hang out with us while we start to talk a little bit about what we do here at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. Um, and you will definitely hear some of Lauren's voice and maybe see Lauren's face behind the camera. She Hello. Is, <laughs> she is my co-worker um, and we like to tag team all of our virtual tours together. Um, so <laughs> A little bit about who we are here at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. Jasmine, what do we do here? You know, I don't know if she's going to be uh, the most help at answering our questions today, but <laughs> here at Catskill Animal Sanctuary, um, we have been rescuing farmed animals for 20 years now. We are really, really fortunate to be um, celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, this year. And we have been rescuing everyone from chickens and turkeys to pigs and cows. Um, we rescue 11 different species here and have about 200 residents who currently call the sanctuary home although we've rescued over 5,000 animals in the years that we've been doing this work. Um, and what we've learned over the years of rescuing individuals like Jasmine here is that they are truly unique and wonderful beings. 
So we take them in from situations where they're maybe not being treated so well. And we provide them a safe home for the rest of their lives. But we also want to make sure that we're making the world a better place for all animals, um, not just the ones who are lucky enough to call Casio Animal Sanctuary home. And so what we do is we also let them be ambassadors for their species. Um, we let Jasmine show the world how awesome pigs really are. Um, we let our chickens and our horses and our ducks show the world how cool their species are um, and how they deserve the right to live healthy, happy lives just like any of us. Um, and so we love the opportunity to take people around the sanctuary and meet some of them as the individual personalities who they are. And if we go around today, we're going to talk about some of the stories of a few of our residents here at the sanctuary. Um, and then the third thing that we do here on top of rescuing animals and getting them healthy and letting them be ambassadors for their species. The third thing we do is we advocate for vegan living, which means that me and or I and Lauren do not eat. Um, we don't eat animals. Um, instead, we leave them off of our plates. We leave their eggs, their milk off of our plates um, and opt for all sorts of delicious plant foods instead. Um, and Jasmine, do you like a, do you like a, good, a good vegetable, fruit and vegetable treat too? She would say absolutely if she were not busy math right now, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about these guys as we go around. Um, while we're still here with Jasmine, um, I want to give a chance for people to guess just how much she weighs. How big do you think Jasmine is? Because she is definitely one of the larger pigs that a lot of our visitors have ever seen. So if you want to go ahead, leave some guesses in there. Um, I will let Lauren uh, tell me some of the answers that we're getting in a minute. Um, and in the meantime, I thought I might as well just share a little bit about Jasmine's story. Um, so she is... Oh, she may end up. Uh, she may end up waking up because I think we've got one of our uh, rescued sheep in the background. So hopefully she won't get too distracted. Um, but uh, Jasmine here, um, <laughs> Jasmine here, freed herself off of a farm. Um, she was found wandering through the woods. It's stretching bigger. We're just getting a little bit bigger of a. Because like we're we're there. keeping an eye on things going on, and we've decided no, I'd rather go back to sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Jasmine here, um, she was found by somebody who was hiking with her dog through the woods and saw a little tiny piglet dart pass, um, and. At the time, Jasmine was maybe 40 pounds. So if you haven't entered a guess about how big she is, I'll tell you, she's a lot bigger than 40 pounds now. Um, and this person who saw Jasmine dart past went and looked around. She was concerned. She wanted to check and see if there were other pigs, maybe a mama pig, sibling piglets around. And she couldn't find anyone. So she realized that this little baby was in need of help. Um, and this is what we count on. We count on good people to see an animal in need and say, I want to do something about that. I want to help this animal and I can take this into my own hands. I can find people who will be able to help me provide them a good home and shelter. So this woman went and tried to catch Jasmine that day in the woods and bring her to safety. Unfortunately, Jasmine was scared. She was a little piglet all alone in the woods. Um, and so she was fast and she ran away. And it wasn't until the next day um, that this woman returned after having gone home. She hadn't succeeded the first time, but she had not given up. Instead, she put on her thinking cap and she thought to herself, what would 
a piglet want if they were alone? And she's like, food, really good, delicious food. So she went ahead and made a wonderful vegan shepherd's pie and returned to the same spot in the woods. And then, uh, and then she scooped up Jasmine, who had fallen for the trap, uh, the pro trap, and she was able to bring our little baby to sanctuary uh, back in 2014. So she's been with us for almost seven years now. This fall, she'll have been with us for seven years. And boy, has she grown a lot. Lauren, what were some of the guesses we had about how big she was? Oh, man. So we got a whole bunch. I'm seeing anywhere from like 100 or 200 all the way up to over a thousand and a whole bunch in between. <laughs> so if she was 40 pounds when she was a baby, how much is she now? So Jasmine, she hasn't stepped on a scale in a little while, which is totally fine. But she is probably around 600 or so pounds now. So she is a very big and she's lucky to have had this chance to grow up. Um, someone like Jasmine, had she stayed on the farm, she might have only lived till she was about six months old and 250 pounds. And here she's had a chance. She's a little over seven years old now, a healthy 600 pounds. Um, and may end up getting a little bit heavier over the course of her life. But she's had this beautiful chance to grow up um, and enjoy so much love here at the sanctuary. So she is just, I, I say she's 600 pounds of love on four legs. All right, my sweetheart, we love you. But we have to go see some of our other friends, all right? So uh, we... Oh. Before before we go, there will be a time for you to take some selfies with Kaden and the animals at the end. But maybe we're just going to zoom in on Jasmine super quick. So if you want to get a quick selfie with Jasmine, go on, Kaden. Kaden, give her a hug. <laughs> give her a nice hug. Oh, beautiful. What a good pig. She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> um, All right, what do you say? All right, I think we should go and see one of my other friends, Nelly, soon, right? Good night, Jasmine. <laughs> She's going to take a little pre dinner nap time. And as we walk out of this field, we'll actually be able to see the nice big green field that Jasmine has to walk around in. And then she just decided to not lay in right now. Um, but we are going to head over this way and, uh, and then we're going to pop up. Uh, just a little slide about what we do here at the sanctuary as we walk over to see Nellie. Um, so I'm probably going to be pretty quiet as we walk. You see Jasmine's beautiful field out there. Oh, look at that. And that is one of her friends in the background, Charlotte, she enjoying is. the field. We just separated them because Charlotte was being a little noisy before the start. <laughs> okay, off we go. All right, I'm actually gonna switch it around. So now you see Lauren, hello. Just as we're walking through the barn. It's a little bit dark and it might be a little bit noisy in here just because we've got some fans and things blowing. Um, so just don't, don't mind that, we'll be through in a moment. And I'm gonna actually flip it back because Caden is being followed by a little sheep. <laughs> Ferguson was following you. Yes. <laughs> Hey, buddy. This is Atticus the sheep. Hayden, what did you say to them? I must have said something terrible. They ah. are not our next stop, but you can't say no to saying hello to a sheep. You are an absolute sweetheart. They're happy that you see them. Stewie's 
He's a goofball, total cuddle bug, very outgoing guy. I mean, back for this whole herd, he's out there in the background getting a scratch. This is a good sign that I'm getting the right spot on him. So one of the things that animals at a sanctuary need isn't just food, water, and shelter, but they also need lots of love. And so that means figuring out where they like to be scratched, figuring out how they like to hang out. Some of them want to play, some of them want to cuddle. And we get to know them all as individuals with their personality now. So we're going to go into the infirmary to see a goat named Nell. Um, and uh, leave your guesses in the comments about uh, why Nelly might be what we call our infirmary. Hi, Stuart. Yes. So <laughs> we're going to give you a little bit more time to guess why um, Nellie might be in the building that we call our infirmary. Um, and we may also. Uh, Nellie is one of my absolute favorite goats here at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. Um, she is a little bit, a little bit mellowed out from where uh, she used to be at, um, but she is so, so sweet. Um, and Nellie normally has a big herd of goats who she runs with. She's very social. She loves other goats. She loves saying hello to humans. And it hasn't always been the case for Nellie. So Nellie actually is someone who had a pretty fearful time adjusting to life at a sanctuary. And it makes perfect sense when we think about her backstory. Um, so Nellie is someone who was born and raised on a goat farm, and she was being raised ultimately to be killed and eaten. And on her way to a slaughterhouse, on her way to be killed, Nellie was on a truck with a lot of other goats, and she gave birth. So she was actually pregnant and gave birth to her baby while on a truck. Uh, and that isn't altogether rare, unfortunately, for animals like Nellie. But what was really rare was the good luck and the good hearted kindness that was shown towards her after. And so Nellie was fortunate enough to be sent to a cat and dog shelter after this incident with her baby. Uh, and she got to raise her baby there, and then her baby was adopted out. Nellie has um, an illness that can spread to other goats, though, and so that made her less adoptable. Um, and ultimately, she came here to Catskill Animal Sanctuary to live the rest of her life, healthy as can be, um, with us. Uh, and she has a herd of goats who have the same illness as her that she would hang out with all of the time. But um, what were some of the reasons we saw that Nellie might be in what we call our infirmary for? Um, maybe that she's not feeling well, that she's got some kind of germs that might be bothering her. For sure. Um, Nellie, kind of separate from what uh, she has uh, as a little bit of a lifelong illness, um, she got sick. Um, with something else a little more recently, a couple of months ago, and our veterinarians that work with the sanctuary did a great job of helping her get back to health. But it left her with a, a little more trouble eating. 
Um, and it also left her with problems uh, with her eyes. So she's not able to see as well and she's not able to walk around her field on her own very well yet. So she lives in the infirmary, which is sort of like our on-site nurse's office. The nurse's office of the sanctuary, right, Nellie? Uh, and there she can get lots of help. Um, she can get help with, uh, you know, walking around. She can get help with her food. She gets her medicine. She gets all of this special, loving care. Yeah, and she still does go outside sometimes, yes. too, right? So she's yeah. at a little yard in the front where she goes and hangs out outside, too. And we're hanging out in here. A lot of our animals are actually inside right now because we are expecting a big storm. So we want to make sure that we we're able to say hello to some of them uh, without us all getting our camera and microphone rained on. So. But I don't think she's minding. She's just chilling. She's just having a good time. Um, and so we give our animals that care, just like we would do for a cat or a dog. Um, just like any other animal uh, in our families. Excuse me, I believe you stopped petting the goat <laughs> for a moment. Um, I don't know if you all could just see the look in Nellie's eyes of like looking at Caden and like, uh, ahem, pardon me. <laughs> Why do we not pet the goat constantly? 110% love. It's a little love bug. And there really is. I mean, honestly, um, this is the same way that my cat gets when she wants love and attention. Uh, there's not such a big difference we've learned here at the sanctuary at all between them and a cat or a dog or other species who we think of more as friends and less as food. Um, and for us, Nellie is absolutely friend and family, right? But we've got to go see some of our fellow residents. Uh, let's get no, let's get a quick close up with Nellie. Okay. So if anyone wants to do a selfie again with Nellie, let's get a little close up. <laughs> oh, a little shake. There she is. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> and we also have her special cut hay here. So Yummy. She does have a little bit of a harder time eating now. Um, and she gets food that is easier for her to chew and digest, uh, which is just part of taking care of our friends and making sure we make accommodations that they deserve. Because um, she still has a good life, right? Yeah. All right, we're going to go see my friends Al and Ruth. So Nellie, she was rescued after she was saved off of a truck. Jasmine oh, sorry. freed <laughs> herself. Jasmine freed herself from a farm and was found hiking through the woods. Um, you can go ahead and leave some other guesses about where some of our rescued animal friends come from. And then when we meet Al, we're going to talk about his story too. All right, so we're going to go in a different building now. All right, so we're inside, and Caden is going to go ahead and grab Al to hang out with. And Al is a beautiful, handsome little chicken. Let's see. Oh, I hear him. I don't know if you all can hear him, but he's coming. He's coming. And then you all also get a little behind the scenes view of our um, offices here. Oh. Here he comes. Oh my goodness. He's a very talkative guy. Oh, there he is. Hello, oh my goodness, hello. Oh my gosh, he's so fast. 
<laughs> and I actually brought in because I know chickens well. And I know that they usually have many missions. Um, so I brought in some mulberries that I picked fresh from the tree. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's just following you around. <laughs> You're gonna spin around. There we go. Um, so this is my friend, Al. Buddy, mulberry over here, my dude. Oh, we've got so much to adventure. We're going to see if he'll come over. I said, I have a feeling his friend Luke will come over. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. Al, have you realized? So my friend Al over here. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Ruth is getting all the mulberries. Um, so there we go. Nothing like a treat like that. Um, Al was found on the sidewalk in New York City. Actually, Brooklyn to be specific. So he was found on a sidewalk um, and a concerned person uh, who was like, I'm not used to seeing chickens in the city. That seems a little weird. Um, decided to pick up young Al and um, and to find him a home, like a sanctuary, ultimately us. Oh yeah, there's a mulberry, there's a mulberry down there. Hi, buddy. Oh, Ruth got it. Ruth is faster than you. Um, decided to bring him to safety. And I was here six, oh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna complain a little bit about it. I was here six years ago when Al first arrived. So I had a chance to meet him. Um, does anyone have any guesses about where Al might have originally come from? Like, how did he end up on a sidewalk in New York City? Go ahead, take a few guesses, and then I, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Al looked like when he first arrived and made his life now. He's like, I've got things to do. <laughs> we got exploring. Uh, yeah. So I did mention we're kind of expecting a storm here at the sanctuary. Um, and so I brought them inside where we would be able to see them without getting everything wet uh, because it's a little, a little dark in their coop if we were to hang out with them in their coop. Um, so this is a new fun experience for Al. I'm just giving him a good butt scratch here. So when he was first found and brought to sanctuary six years ago, Al's feathers were softer, fluffier than they are now. Still white and definitely like, you know, not fuzz, but softer feathers. Oh. He had baby blue eyes. I don't know if we can see it super well. I know. I know. I'll give you butt scratches soon. Um, he had baby blue eyes. Now he has his grown up eye color. So a little bit like humans, um, when... Uh, some of us are born, we have blue eyes that later turn green oh. or hazel or brown. Chickens like Al are patched with blue eyes and then their eyes as they grow up uh, move from baby blue to yellow or orange. And his voice, his voice was a little peeping chick voice. Oh yes, you are so graceful, you're majestic and graceful and I love you so much. Um, and just like humans, as we get older, our voices get deeper. Um, and so Al has his grown up voice now. Um, the, what were our guesses about where he might have come from, Lauren? Ah, uh, well, we've got a bunch of people saying he might have come from a farm, like a farm of some kind. Yeah, that makes the most sense to me. Um, so Al did come, uh, we, don't, we don't know officially. Uh, but he probably came from a live market in New York City. But a guess that he came from a farm um, makes a ton of sense because a lot of chickens in live markets, essentially where animals are sold while they're still alive, but they are intended to be food for somebody. Um, a lot of them are originally born on farms. And also, Al is exactly the kind of chicken we see on chicken farms. Um, so when he was rescued, he was probably about five or six weeks old and rescued right before he 
he would have been eaten. I'm so sorry. It's a terrible story. You don't like that part of the story, do you? I do. I'm really sorry about it. Are you gonna are you gonna clean off my hat? Oh. He might clean off my hat. We're gonna see. He is one of my favorite chickens. He's such a lap bird. He's really snuggly. He comes running when I call his name. Um, he absolutely does know his name. Uh, Ruth, his friend, who's been uh, chiming in in the background and was looking at me like, how dare you not be petting me right now? And also who left us a lovely little chicken poop on the floor here. Um, Ruth also knows her name. They've got so much going on in their little minds and they're not unintelligent at all. They absolutely love um, they feel so many of the same things as us. Um, so they can feel joy and excitement, fear, sadness, grief. Um, but uh, they clearly eat up life here at the sanctuary. And it's a gift to be able to give that to them. But Al, I don't know if we can see his foot. Can you see his foot on the camera, Lauren? Pan down a little bit. Al has a foot wrap on here um, because he is an older guy and he's someone who was bred to grow really big, really quickly. In fact, Al is someone who would grow about twice as big in half the time as a similar chicken would have done in 1950 or so. So in less than a century, humans We've selectively bred chickens like Al to get really big quickly. And selective breeding means we choose to make them look a little different. So like we've changed how dogs look, chihuahuas versus Dalmatians versus golden retrievers. So Al grows a little big and he has pressure on his feet. So he's got some foot problems that we like to take care of. We need to take care of for him to be comfortable and healthy. Um, but he is, you know, he's a six and a half year old dude who's going, going strong and having a really good life here at the sanctuary. And we are starting to run a little short on our time before we get to some questions. Yes. But did you want to tell us real quick, what does he keep doing? Like, he's like poking at his feathers. Oh, yeah. So he is preening himself. Um, and preening is a chicken's way of cleaning themselves, sort of like when cats lick their backs or they lick their paws and then wipe their face uh, in order to give themselves a cat bath. This is a version of a chicken bath. And when I pet a spot on Al that feels nice and he feels like I am helping him preen, he also does it. So this is a bonding moment. And it's him saying, I'm comfortable with you, Caden, and we are having a bonding moment together, which I think is special. Um, and I know we are uh, wrapping out of time. So I just want to say that Al um, is one of the big reasons that we choose to not eat chickens and other animals here at the sanctuary. Because we can see how much personality and life is in them here at the sanctuary. And we've learned that we can live a really happy, healthy life, exploring all sorts oh. of delicious foods made from plants instead. So we want to challenge you to try out some uh, plant-based recipes at home after this, if you want. Um, but do we have to get to our selfie time now? I think it's about that time. So before we formally get started with that selfie, I know a few of you may have been snapping photos with some of our other animal friends throughout. As a quick reminder, uh, as, as you get those cameras at the ready, if you post those selfies on Instagram and you tag us here at Varsity Tutors and Catskill Animal Sanctuary, you'll have the opportunity to win that virtual cameo and a subscription to our Wildlife Creature Camp, a part of our virtual summer camp series where you'll have the opportunity to learn about all sorts of wildlife life with your fellow explorers and get the chance to complete un unplugged and after camp challenges and receive some specialized content from our camp guest stars. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pan back to our stars of the day. It looks like we might get Al and Ruth a little bit in this selfie. So uh, take it away, Caden, Ruth and Al. <laughs> it's just a little chicken zoom in and there's Caden. They are so good. <laughs> Al, 
Do you want to do your selfie? <laughs> That is so wonderful. And it looks like Al and Ruth are so psyched to be here that they may hang out while we go through some of the wonderful questions that you all had to ask. So by all means, if you didn't get a chance to snap that selfie just yet, feel free to do so. Uh, in the meantime, we had some really, really wonderful questions. We had a lot of students who were very interested in Jasmine, uh, who were wondering how much she weighed even before we went on to ask them to guess. And, uh, <laughs> who are wondering some of Jasmine's other favorite habits and uh, how long she tends to nap in a given day. Ooh, <laughs> that, the napping is one of her favorite habits, honestly. There is no one who can nap quite as well as a middle-aged or old pig. And that <laughs> Jasmine is getting to be a middle-aged pig. So she really likes to, she loves to root around in her field. So I know she was hanging out. She was honestly waiting for um, a meal truck to come by. So that's why she was hanging close to her fence when we saw her. But she loves to be out and about in her grassy field, rooting through the meadow, digging up the earth with her, her nose because she could smell three feet underground. So that's really fun and engaging for her. Uh, she loves in hot weather to take a mud bath. So the rain is actually helping fill up her mud wallow right now. And on, a, on the next sunny day, she is gonna dunk herself in that mud, cover herself in it, and probably do her third favorite thing, napping, uh, while hanging out in her mud wallow. So those are some of her favorite, favorite things to do here at the sanctuary. And she probably naps, I don't know, what would you say? At least six hours a day, Lauren, right? In addition to actually sleeping at night. Yep. Yeah, she, <laughs> she takes a couple naps throughout the day that probably adds up to like six or seven hours. <laughs> Well, sounds like she certainly has a, a pretty swell life there, uh, hanging out and napping and doing all of her favorite things. Uh, we, I think, heard a couple of animals that didn't necessarily make their way on screen throughout today's lesson. So students are wondering what other animals that we maybe didn't get a chance to meet today do you have at the sanctuary? And I know this is really, really tough to answer, but do you have a favorite? Um, <laughs> I have a couple of favorites, but yeah, here in the sanctuary, we have a lot of different species who we rescue, all farmed animals. So we have chickens, Al and Ruth are chickens, turkeys, ducks, geese, pigs, goats, bunnies, sheep, a mini donkey, a mini hinny, who is the mini donkey's daughter, a horse, or horses, cows. Have I missed anyone, Lauren? I don't think so. You got sheep? I got sheep. Goats? I did. So yeah, those are who we rescue. Um, and yeah, they make up our, you know, our 200 or so rescued animals here. And uh, my favorite residents at the sanctuary, well, one of them is right here. Al is, Al is on camera today because he is one of my favorites. And he's perfect in every single way. He looks a little scruffy because he's an old man, but he's perfect. And I also have a sheep named Talia who I'm absolutely absolutely enamored with <laughs> but I love them all so much oh that is so adorable and uh while we've gotten to meet some of the residents today students are also wondering how you come up with the names of the animals that's a really good question because we do almost always give them human oh. names everybody gets a name at sanctuary and most of them are names that we might also have ourselves and usually they don't come with names uh, but we want to make sure that we're showing the world that they are individuals just like us. So, um, you know, sometimes their rescuer is who they're named after. Sometimes they're named after someone really important to the sanctuary, someone special. Um, and otherwise, we've got a list of names that uh, people have proposed we eventually give to new rescues. And we pull from that, whichever one feels like it fits the new, uh, the new individual who are welcoming to our big family here. 
Oh, that is so cool. And it sounds like, I know we had uh, the opportunity to check out some social media and learn more from your site. And so uh, for those who are interested in learning a little more about some of the animals we didn't meet today, we probably have a good opportunity to do so there. Uh, we also had some, some students who were maybe a little bit jealous that we've spent the lesson, you know, petting uh, some of their favorite animals too, and are wondering how they could start to get involved, whether it's volunteer or even just learning a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely recommend that you take a look at our website uh, because we have all sorts of opportunities. We do, uh, we do welcome volunteers. Um, we also love to do virtual field trips and programs. So if you share what we do with your school, um, who knows, you could take a virtual field trip uh, with your classroom, no matter where you are in the country or around the world. Um, and we also love when people support the work we do. Um, maybe you fell in love with Ruth or Al or Jasmine today and you wanna sponsor one of them and get updates on our rescued animals. That helps us to give them good, great healthy food, great medical care when they need it so they see the vet um, and uh, make sure that we're keeping their homes just up to date and safe and healthy for them all. Um, so we recommend sponsoring your animals and also just supporting our social media and sharing the word about how amazing rescued chickens and turkeys and pigs and cows really are um, will help make the world a better place so that hopefully in the long run, fewer animals need to be rescued in the first place. That is absolutely fantastic. And uh... It, yeah, it looks like we've seen plenty of evidence of how absolutely adorable and uh, personality driven some of the residents we got to see today were. And that leads me to one of our final questions. We got to meet Jasmine, very, very briefly in the distant, meet Jasmine's friend, uh, Charlotte. And so students are wondering, how can you tell that the animals are friends with one another and how do they become friends with one another? Charlotte's story is actually kind of perfect in terms of how do you become friends with them. Pigs will let you know if they're friends with one another. Pigs will really, really get angry and they will shout at each other if they aren't friends. So that's really clear. But we just watch and we pay attention to what their bodies are telling us with their body language and we pay attention to what they're saying verbally. So we know their happy sounds versus their unhappy sounds. And we just want to make sure that they look relaxed and comfortable when they're meeting new individuals. Um, and when we're introducing them to each other, we do, we do supervised play dates, really, is what it is. So we check and make sure that everything is actually going smoothly. And we don't let them be unsupervised until we're clearly um, very confident that they are friends. So Charlotte and Jasmine actually just became friends a week ago. And things are going really well right now. They still they still fought, squabble a little bit, and so that's why they were they were having a dispute over who was going to get to nap where Jasmine ultimately was napping. Um, but uh, but they otherwise they get along. They're polite to each other. Uh, and I guess we got a pretty clear sense of who won that mm -hmm. particular argument between them. <laughs> Uh, but that is so, so cute. Now, uh, it is about that time and you've already answered so many of the student questions that have come in as we've gone through the lesson with the help of some of our animal friends. Uh, but do you have any other final thoughts that you would like to leave the class? Oh gosh, I just want to make sure that we thank everybody for coming out and watching our uh, watching our virtual uh, tour of the sanctuary and learning about farmed animals who we usually don't have the chance to see in our day-to-day -day lives. So thank you so much for coming out and we hope that you'll follow the sanctuary on our Facebook, on our Instagram, our TikTok and stay up to date with all of the work that we're doing and maybe we'll see some of your faces around here in person, maybe for some of our in-person tours on weekends as well. Um, so definitely check out casanctuary.org uh, and we'd love to have you involved in our Catskill family. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again to Caden, to Lauren in the background, to all of the animal friends that we got to meet today. I'll be sure that those tags make their way on screen. Uh, and after the fact, if you hang tight for just a moment, uh, you'll also be able to see some of those instructions on that giveaway. So thank you so much once again to the entire team at Catskill Animal Sanctuary, uh, both human and animal friends. And we hope to see you all back because the team at Scats Catskill will be rejoining us on August 12th to share more about their farm sanctuary experiences. And in the meantime, don't forget to post those selfies and tag us at Varsity Tutors and the Sanctuary to Win. Thanks so much, everybody.